the campaign to keep Britain in the EU, hoped that their warnings of dire economic consequences if we left would be enough to persuade voters to maintain the status quo. But in the end, Project Fear, as it was dubbed by the Leave campaign, failed to convince. So what impact has the decision to leave the EU had on business and the economy? Giles has been finding out. We can now say the decision taken in 1975 by this country to join the common market has been reversed by this referendum uh, to leave the EU. After weeks of campaigning and predictions of disaster from either side, whatever we chose, the result was, to many, unexpected and came with a truckload of concerns and questions. Having been told by the then Chancellor George Osborne, amongst many others, that leaving the EU would spell financial turmoil, he's no longer in charge of that economy, nor in the government that has to manage it. But in one regard, he was right, and Leave supporters would accept it. Brexit was always the more uncertain choice, because it hadn't been done before. And if there's one thing markets hate and react to, it's uncertainty. Across the world's markets that morning, sterling fell against the dollar, UK's credit rating was downgraded, the FTSE 100 and FTSE 250 fell, as did shares in banks, and the IMF cut economic growth forecasts for the Eurozone. Did it mean that Project Fear was becoming Project Fact? Now, loath as I am to set up a straw man just to knock it down again, here in the Treasury, of course, they are watching the UK economy to see whether the vote to leave has had an effect on it. But when you're trying to decide that, it really rather depends on where you're coming from. If you're a Remainer, you're going to be looking for evidence that they were right, it's all a disaster and it's all going to go wrong. If you're a Lever, you're going to be looking for evidence that backs up the fact that it was all fine after all. And the truth is... It's really too early to tell. Frustratingly, that provides no reassurance for either side right now. But as economists who supported Brexit gathered in London last week, they were, perhaps unsurprisingly, upbeat. Often overlooked is that government borrowing rates are now at their record level of all time. Admittedly, borrowing rates for many countries are at low levels, but it suggests that international investors have not discriminated against the UK. It highlights the fact that the UK government, if it wanted to, with a new Prime Minister, could borrow incredibly cheaply for infrastructure investment. So when you actually look at the markets, look at what's happening, as opposed to listen to what people are saying in some respects. Nonetheless, in the world financial powerhouse that is London, there are still signs our referendum decision is having some negative repercussions, especially within the currency markets. Because why would you invest in a country that is yet to work out what its new position is in the normal world environment? But we are not in a normal world environment. We are in a world with almost zero to negative interest rates. We are in a world where growth is at best sluggish. The US could be led by, for the first time really in 100 years, by somebody who doesn't believe in international trade and, and global trade as a way to secure wealth. China, the next biggest economy in the world, is slowing rapidly. Nobody quite knows how much because the uh, official GDP data is made up, can I say. So we are not in a normal world. In a normal world, if this happened, then yes, people would be stopping investing in the UK. SoftBank's £24 billion purchase of tech manufacturer Arm will be seized on as proof of that. But in the months to come, expect supporters of Leave and Remain to cherry-pick economic news that chips away at the others' predictions. Charles still not reporting. Well, joining me now is the former Justice Minister and leading Leave campaigner Dominic Raab. Welcome back to Thank you. The Daily Politics. Thank you. Let's have a look at some of the uh, data. According to the EY Item Club, after the vote to leave, uh, the UK growth forecast for 2016 was cut from 2.3 to 1.9 percent and down to 0.4 percent for 2017. Uh, consumer confidence fell at its fastest pace in 22 years, with high streets suffering in the wake of the vote to leave. That, according to the Society for Consumer consumer research GFK. So, they weren't wrong, the doom mongers, were they? Well, I think they were. The, the warnings of a bomb under the economy or recession have all been proved wrong on the very forecast that you just gave me, because the suggestion that there might be a cut of growth is very different from going into full sale recession. Employment is at record levels. Borrowing levels are very uh, uh, good for us, as we've just heard on the report. The latest manufacturing index 
uh, data has been very positive and the FTSE 100 and 250 are at higher levels than when David Cameron came back with ah. the CU deal in February. So look, w no one has said there aren't any short-term risks, but my argument would be when we go into this Brexit negotiation and as the parameters become clearer and we're clear we're not going to end up with massive trade barriers, yes, we should focus on managing risk, but actually there's huge opportunities ahead. Let's not talk about this as a gloomy damage limitation exercise. There are golden opportunities ahead. Manage the risks, seize those opportunities. All right, there is a concession there about risks, but actually it's too early to tell, isn't it? I, I agree with your commentator that it's completely silly uh, to go on looking at economic policy and economic movement in terms of refighting that ridiculous election campaign, you know, the referendum campaign, where the arguments on both sides were frankly painful and rather silly. Uh, what what, what you, you cannot do, uh, I start the proposition, my view is, you can't actually reduce your trade links with a market of 500 million people without making yourself poorer. Uh, and I do think there's a, the uncertainty is causing not only the financial markets to go mad... and if Which they do they anyway, buy, aren't they? Because yes, they are volatile. Right. But we have no investment taking place. We have a fall in confidence. The longer the uncertainty goes on, the more likely so, it is we'll go into recession between now uh, and Christmas. Uh, well, when so do you think... Well, hang on. The, the, the sooner... The sooner that we end the uncertainty, and I agree with Dominic, make sure that we don't put new barriers to trade and investment between ourselves and our most important market, the better. All right, the other well, things, we're going to talk, all the other talk about, to argue about, how to stop foreigners yeah, coming here, all that, we're going I to... would leave that. Uh, I would get on with restoring confidence, getting people to invest here again by actually establishing the kind of access Otherwise, the Norwegians have got. There to is the a European recession market. by Christmas. Well, we were told there'd be an cl economic cliff edge the day after. That hasn't happened. I suspect well, these. Never said that. The, well, no, maybe not you, Ken, but many on no. those side. And I didn't say any of the things that you're attributing. But hang on a to second. The you said there was well, going to be a recession the day after. Outside, no, I didn't say recession. I said an economic cliff edge. Right. And we haven't seen that. Look at the FTSE. Now, well, hang on. We, if you we, look at the FTSE, let's be clear about the FTSE. I mean, and, and if we look at the, the value of the pound too, yes, there were falls and it's rallied a, a little bit against the dollar and the euro. The FTSE 100 initially fell, but it later recovered. The FTSE 200 fell and is still below pre-referendum level. So that's as but it is now. not below the level of when David Cameron came back in February, if you look at the latest figures. And look, businesses actually, from Aston Martin to Amazon, have since the referendum result announced new investment in the UK in terms of Aston Martin's Welsh facility, in terms of uh, jobs here in the UK. So what I would say to you, Joe, is yes, there is some uncertainty, but it is not well, hang the on. doom and gloom we've been predicting. But let's now, on, on, hang on, make, just, just before you met, on the uncertainty, though, yeah. the uncertainty will be about whether businesses hold on to their cash, they don't invest. They say that. that then will lead to economic problems. And isn't that going to happen? Because we've got to wait at least two years before no. we know what's going to happen. Two big things that have happened. One, one of the uncertainty, one of the causes of the uncertainty was about the vacuum in government post the referendum when David Cameron resigned. That has been resolved mercifully, swiftly, and that's one of the reasons why both Sterling and the FTSE have rebounded. The second thing that needs to happen, and we've heard from David Davis and Liam Fox and the rest of the Brexit team, we expect this to happen by Christmas or early in the new year, is the parameters of our negotiation will become clearer. And I hope at that point it's very clear that there's not going to be huge trade barriers and that will free up those businesses that are currently on hold with investment decisions, quite waiting to see what the lie of the land is. That has got nothing to do with the ludicrous scaremongering that preceded the referendum. Right, and that ludicrous scaremongering, as Dominic Raab calls it, this idea of a, of a punishment budget, uh, we know what happened to George Osborne uh, as a result of that, the idea of balancing the budget by the end of the Parliament, that's been uh, abandoned. Some people would say, rightly, growth is being put before deficit reduction. I mean, these are positive things, aren't they, yeah, economically? Well, some of the things that were said were as daft as the millions of Turks that were going to flood in if you voted to remain. Um, uh, the only the mass media reported all the personalities and all the sillier arguments. I stick to the IMF, the OECD, the Bank of England. Mark Carney has been running the shop recently very well. It didn't convince enough people though, to vote some... to stay in, did it? Well, nobody reported it. I mean, the view of the media was that, on the whole it was rather boring. That's not true, this, uh, We reported stuff. ad infinitum about those institutions. I mean, there is a view broadly that saying many yeah, leave well, voters actually it, felt they weren't benefiting from the so-called recovery. Said, We've had enough of experts and that brought all it all well, to no, an end. Well, no, actually, in fairness, so for example, IMF Bank of England. Carney, Lagarde come out and with dire predictions, people like Professor Modi, former chief economist of the IMF, and Paul Sharp on the FPC, the committee of the Bank of England, came back and said, hold on a minute, it's not going to be quite as bad as that. What we 
argued is, hold on, some of the political appointees are coming out with, frankly, oh, rather partisan assessments, which their experts don't agree with. Right, do well, not attack Mark Carney as a political appointee. The and the, well, he is. Do, not, on, or, do not also interpret the events of the first month as a means of allowing you to go back to make all the attacks on these institutions <laughs> which were made in the first part Ken, of the campaign. You got the euro we wrong. Have, we you have got a, this we one have, wrong. Oh, everyone I, got it wrong. Everybody got it wrong. I didn't well, get the euro wrong. We, 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 okay. we, no, no, we, this, silly, this silly populist politics is not the way of what dealing just with a serious populist? economic Problem I was scrutinising Mark Carney. You cannot and on actually the between withdraw. What he said. But you did, did you accuse him of not being independent? Anyone was that? Wasn't that the thrust of the attack against him? Uh, well, very popular. I think the point that I made was when these people came out and when you looked, for, for example, Mark Carney first up at the Treasury Select Committee actually gave rather a balanced set of evidence. When he went on the Andrew Marr show, I did feel it was a stronger political intervention. And actually, Ken, you're, you're shaking your head. But compare the evidence he gave Look, to the Treasury over Committee. Now. You've won. Right, and well, on that, for heaven's on sake, that, let's get on. the question. The, the question serious about problem at the moment is you're not going to get major investment in this country. It's no good. Of course, you won't all stop. It's no good just citing one or two. You're not going to get the major investment required. You're not going to restore Rolls Royce until, on, until you Hang until on, you establish. No, now Ken Clark, let me let yeah, me yeah, ask until, 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 gentlemen, until, until you establish exactly what our trade and economic relationship. Well, we're going to discuss that. And you, if you sacrifice some of the access we have now to the we European know. single market, you will make this country... But my point, Joe, very right. briefly, we're going to, we would know the no, contours we're going to of that talk about around it. Christmas. No, we are going to talk and about that. Moment, Ken Clark, I'm going to talk, because we are going to talk right. in detail about that. I want to ask Dominic Raab just briefly, you are on the winning side. Yes. Disappointed you lost your job then? Well, a little bit. Everyone um, has their own personal ambitions in politics, but much more gratified to see Britain take the right decision and frankly I just want to make it work and I'll support this government and at the same time I like Ken enjoy the freedom of the backbenches. Right, I mean you backed uh, Michael Gove um, in the leadership contest, he's no longer round uh, the cabinet table, we saw pictures mm. from inside the cabinet first time, how big a loss is he to government do you think? I think one of the great social reformers of our generation, so I am sorry to see him go. But look, I'm not going to quibble with a new Prime Minister who gets the right to pick her team. I'm going to support this government, and if you want to hear me bad mouth anyone, you're not going to hear it. I didn't do that through the referendum campaign, I didn't do it through the leadership contest, and I'm not going to do it now. Right, but obviously disappointed. You expected probably to be there because people would say that you were a leading light in that Leave campaign that, that was victorious. Very kind of you to say so, Joe. but lots of people have lots of expectations about lots of things. Right. Politics is a game of ups and downs.